van uh, Mr. Truck van uh, Tesla. En hij is helemaal overgevlogen uit Marseille voor dit punt. Jérôme Guillem. Le clicker is so lap. Merci. <laughs> Bonjour. Uh, I'm sorry, my Dutch is not very good, so I'll, I'll speak in English, yeah? unless everybody wants in French. Um, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm very honored uh, that TLN asked us to be here. Uh, thank you, Arthur. And uh, um, it, it means a lot for us to be here. Uh, we only introduced the truck last week in America, and uh, just uh, one week later, we're here. Uh, the Netherlands is a very important country for Tesla. As you know, it's our headquarters in Europe. Uh, it's also where we have a Tilburg factory, and we assemble all the cars in Europe in Tilburg. Uh, so this is a very important country for, uh, for us, and I'm very happy and proud uh, to tell you a little bit about the truck. So what I will show you here is to a large extent uh, what we showed last week uh, in the US. And uh, uh, the units are American units, uh, unfortunately not the metric ones, uh, but I'll try to translate as we go along and I'll try to uh, highlight the differences uh, between uh, what we plan uh, for, what, what we made for Europe and, and the US. Uh, before we start, though, I'll mention that the, uh, uh, we will be, Tesla will be the first customer uh, for its own truck, for the truck. So we will use our own trucks to carry cargo in the U.S. between our different facilities. Uh, we have an assembly factory in California, we have a battery factory in Nevada, so we'll use our truck to carry the things in between. And... Uh, uh, once things are good in the U.S., then we'll expand to Europe. Don't ask me for a specific timing, but we'll do it as soon as possible. Because I know some of you are very eager to get their truck here, and we'll do everything possible. So, uh, I'll show you the presentation, this little picture of the truck. Uh, because it is a Tesla, what matters to us uh, first is the performance. So we have a, uh, uh, we, we want to have a truck which uh, has the best possible performance. So it means different things, um, but one of the uh, uh, important one is the acceleration. So here you have a little uh, comparison uh, between uh, uh, our, uh, our electric truck, and this is actual speed uh, to go from zero to 60 miles per hour. So I know that's 100 kilometers per hour. So I know trucks don't go that fast in Europe, so, but you can imagine uh, how quickly you can go at full load uh, from zero to 100 kilometers per hour. And uh, below is what the uh, diesel truck can achieve. So, two things. The truck can go to speed faster, so you can cover more kilometers in the same amount of time, but also it merges with traffic more smoothly. And this is quite important for safety. So you don't have a truck that takes a long time to get on the highway and you can uh, go faster. Uh, similarly, uh, you can go a quite steep grade at the same highway speed. Again, here I put 65 miles per hour. I know this is quite fast. It's a little over 100 kilometers per hour. That's legal in the U.S., uh, but we will limit it to what uh, the speed limit here uh, is. I know there's not much slope or big grades in the, uh, uh, the Netherlands, but in other parts of Europe there are, and uh, the truck will be able to go uh, um, without uh, having to slow down. Um, what, uh, in terms of range, uh, we're aiming for 800 kilometers range. Uh, that's, that's quite a lot. Um, the gross vehicle weight in the U.S. is 80,000 pounds. That's about 36 uh, metric tons. And uh, uh, the payload, I know there was a lot of question about what's the, the payload, what's the cargo capacity? But the target is to have the same cargo capacity. Now, the Tesla truck should not have to carry uh, less cargo than a diesel one. Uh, so we, ex uh, we intend to have the same cargo capacity. And in the US, at least, 80% of the routes are less than 400 kilometers, which means you can go and come back without having to charge. 
Um, the aerodynamic is very, very special on this uh, vehicle, and you see the shape. It's a little bit like the bullet train, or maybe the TGV, uh, if you want to use that, or the Eurostar. Um, that uh, is a very aerodynamic uh, uh, vehicle, and I'll, I'll explain to you uh, how we achieved that. But it's uh, about half of what it is in the diesel truck. It's about this, and actually, it's, it's quite interesting. The aerodynamics of a European truck and a diesel truck and, uh, and, and the U.S. truck is about the same. So we try to achieve uh, half uh, the aerodynamic drag, and that's uh, even more aerodynamic than the Bugatti Chiron. So uh, it, it, it's pretty good. Uh, why is that important? Because if you're very aerodynamic, you don't need much energy. And the, the, the challenge with an electric vehicle is always how far can you go uh, with a given battery size. Um, in terms of uh, how we make uh, uh, this happen, there's four independent uh, motors. So they're independent, left and right, front and rear. Uh, that gives a very good uh, uh, tra uh, traction control. Each wheel is controlled. Uh, I realized here that we have two drive axles uh, for the US. That's, that's how it works, and that's how the rules work with the bridges. Uh, and we would have to think about how to make uh, this, this work for Europe. And in the front, we have independent front suspension, so it guarantees a uh, very uh, smooth ride. Yeah? So all of this provides uh, a very uh, good performance. I had the pleasure and the luck to drive it, and uh, yeah, it's fun. And I think uh, you will enjoy that as well. Um, very important for us, you know, I, 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 I listened to the speech from Arthur, you know, there is a driver shortage, you know, so we want to make sure that uh, the driver feels very comfortable and that uh, it feels recognized. So here you're going to see uh, there is something that we've done uh, that is pretty unusual, uh, and that is the driver sits in the center, not on the la left, not on the right, uh, sits right in the center. It gives a very good commanding view of the road, very stable as well because you're sitting, uh, sitting uh, just in the uh, axle. And uh, uh, there is a jump seat uh, behind, if you have a passenger or um, a, a teammate. And uh, uh, it's, it's very comfortable. And you can see on either side, uh, there are two screens uh, that provide all the information uh, that you need to, uh, to have. Uh, outside of the screen, you have the mirror, the uh, vision from the cameras. So you have perfect visibility. The vehicle has a lot of cameras. You can see all around. There is no blind spot. Uh, you have all your navigation and all the connection uh, that you may have. Those screens are also capable of integrating seamlessly with uh, whatever fleet systems you're using. So you can track uh, the vehicles, their location. You can send messages. Um, everything is uh, built in already and doesn't need a specific, uh, a different systems. Yeah? Uh, charging. So charging is something that, is, uh, that, I, like to, that I like to talk about uh, at Tesla, and maybe I'll spend a couple of minutes uh, about this. Uh, everybody's always worried about charging, and I understand uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a little intimidating, and, and uh, we've been hearing that story with the cars ever since Tesla started. Now, uh, um, I, I was lucky to, to drive all throughout the US with the Tesla, never had a problem with charging. I was lucky to drive uh, with the Tesla car in Europe, never have a problem uh, for charging. And, uh, uh, and you can see that, I think, uh, here in Europe as well. Uh, uh, if you look at Norway, uh, we're very lucky uh, to sell a lot of Tesla cars in Norway. And, uh, um, and to support the market, we installed uh, charging stations in Norway and all along uh, the highways in Europe uh, for the cars to travel. And then I think you will have observed, as I have, that now you see Norwegian Tesla all around Europe. Uh, they have a lot of vacation and they drive a lot and it's great uh, using the Tesla. But before seeing a, a Norwegian Tesla, I never saw a Norwegian car in the south of France. <laughs> never. So 
As a matter of fact, it's easier to travel with an electric car in Europe than it is with a diesel car, <laughs> right? Because Tesla pays for the electricity of the car driving. And so the Norwegian uh, come on vacation in southern France, and we appreciate that, or Spain, or uh, wherever. So it's not a problem. You know, the, if you ask any, anybody that owns a Tesla, they can drive throughout Europe uh, and without a problem. And we will do the same with trucks. Electricity is available everywhere, and we will install, wherever needed, the charging stations uh, to support the transport uh, through trucks. Naturally, it will make <coughs> sense to charge at origin or destination. So if the trucks have a base, or if there is a place where they always go, naturally, it will make sense to charge at those locations. But in addition, we will de develop a, uh, a network of mega chargers where people can plug. And we call them mega chargers because they will charge very fast. So we're hoping to charge at the, the speed that we have here on the screen, 400 miles, that's 650 kilometers, a little bit over that, in 30 minutes. So imagine, uh, in Europe you have to drive four and a half hours, take a rest for 45 minutes, and then you can drive another four and a half hours, and then you're done. Uh, it will take less than time than you have for your break uh, to charge completely the truck for the remainder of your hours of service. <laughs> so the truck charges faster than the driver rests. So I think this is, this is important. You know, you do not have to cut into your hours of service uh, for uh, charging. So we are not worried about charging for cars. We are not worried about charging for trucks, and neither should you. Uh, this is something that, yes, has to be put in place, but that we're good at it, and, uh, uh, and we can uh, help uh, develop that. Now, uh, over the last couple of years, we've expanded our activities with solar uh, 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 panels and battery storage. Those are very good to lower the cost of electricity. So we're trying to combine those, especially in areas where electricity is particularly expensive. And uh, that's, uh, uh, that's something that, that we can help. Yeah? So charging is not a problem. It will be very uh, convenient. Yeah? Um, safety is something that uh, we also are very uh, uh, keen on. Uh, so besides uh, the standard elements that the battery is protected, provides a low center of gravity, so you have less risk uh, of rolling over, uh, we also have uh, the autopilot. Yeah? So autopilot is something that we have uh, in all our cars. All the Tesla cars have autopilot and all the Tesla truck will, uh, trucks will have autopilot. And it's very similar. As a matter of fact, it's the same components. Uh, it's the same camera, radars, and computers uh, that are on the truck, uh, that are on the cars. And uh, uh, some of the functions that this allows is automatic emergency braking. I think you mentioned that a little bit earlier. Automatic lane keeping. Trucks always remain in the lane. Even if you fall asleep, even if you get sick, the truck will remain in its lane. Uh, also, forward uh, collision warning, and naturally, uh, adaptive cruise control. I, we, I, did, I didn't write it here because it's, it's self-evident for me now, uh, but we have uh, adaptive cruise control uh, as well. So this will make for a fairly uh, safe uh, um, setting. Um, and then uh, reliability. Uh, we want the truck to keep going and going and going and give you the opportunity to uh, make revenue and give the opportunity uh, for the cargo to arrive where it needs to be on time. So the way we are uh, thinking about it is we're going to guarantee uh, the drivetrain 1 million miles. That's 1.6 million kilometers. Uh, that's uh, quite a, a, a long distance. And the, and the reason we can do that is because we really leverage uh, our, uh, the architecture. So I mentioned we have four independent uh, 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 motors, um, so they are redundant. If you lose one drive axle, you can actually keep driving with the other drive axle. Uh, it doesn't have to put you on the side of the, of the road. 
the braking, as with all electric uh, vehicles, is through most of the energy is absorbed through regenerative braking, which means the mechanical brakes hardly work. Uh, so we're designing them actually to last for the life of the truck without service or maintenance, um, because they won't be used uh, very much. And then all the complicated uh, parts of the diesel truck you don't have anymore. Uh, there is no transmission, uh, there is no emission uh, after treatment, uh, there is no uh, differential, it's a very, it's a much, much simpler uh, uh, architecture. And then, uh, just for the fun of it, just to show you a little bit of some of the innovation we do, we also try to reinvent the glass, because we don't want the glass to break. Uh, in, the, in the US in particular, if you have a crack uh, on the glass, you're not allowed to drive. Uh, so it puts the truck on the side of the road and you have to wait for replacing. So I'll show you a little bit uh, how we, uh, we do that. A standard glass, this is a hitch, you know, just like from the trailer. Uh, if you throw it against the windshield, it breaks. But on the Tesla glass, it does not break. So um, we have our own engineering team uh, that designed the glass. It's a specific chemistry, different layers. And you can see that the hitch uh, broke uh, the glass on the left, the standard glass, standard automotive glass, but didn't even chip uh, the Tesla glass on the right. Yeah? So um, the idea here is not always is uh, the best part to service is the one that you don't have to service because it doesn't break. Uh, so we try to, th to think through the engineering uh, through, uh, all throughout the vehicle so that it doesn't, uh, doesn't break. Yeah? Now all of this is good, um, yeah, another thing is uh, we have no key. Uh, there is no physical key for the truck. Everything is through the phone. This is actually the key to my cars, yeah? Uh, the benefit of that, well, you don't have to lose them. They cannot be stolen. Uh, everything is connected to the, to the service. Uh, you can do remote diagnostic, you know, predictive maintenance, uh, location tracking. You can do preconditioning, turn the heat or the air conditioning. Uh, send all the messages, yeah? Uh, and it's electronic key, so you have a new driver, just give them the key, an application, and then they can get to a specific truck, yeah? Um, as I said, everything's good here, but you need to be able to make money. So what uh, matters to us is that uh, you have the lowest cost of ownership. Um, and uh, by cost of ownership, that's the cost of energy. Um, uh, and that's the depreciation of the truck, that's the cost of insurance, that's the cost of, of maintenance. So we're trying to look at all of it. Um, and uh, these are numbers are uh, for the US, so uh, uh, it would have to be adapted, if you will, a little bit to, uh, to the Europe. I know that the cost of diesel is a lot higher in Europe uh, than it is in the US. In the US it's about, at the moment, $2.80 per gallon. The gallon is about four liters, yeah? Um, so uh, we uh, can just now, just looking at the uh, simple cost of operation, you can have about a 20% advantage in the US. And I believe that this advantage would be much greater uh, in uh, Europe because of the differential cost of energy uh, um, between the continents. But if you think about what the truck is capable, and that's uh, what we like to call convoy. I don't like to use the word platooning um, because as the, uh, the minister mentioned, uh, platooning requires a little bit of trust. Um, this one here doesn't require as much trust. You can see there is a safe distance uh, between the vehicles here. Um, and uh, so we can implement that. This is very easy to implement with the current autopilot. Camera based, radar based, uh, and uh, so if you do uh, something like this, you can have a, a driver in the lead uh, uh, position and the other trucks follow autonomously. It's very easy to, uh, uh, to implement. And in that case, uh, the cost of ownership uh, drops dramatically. And in the US, you can hope for a cost of ownership which is about half the one of diesel. So it's a very compelling case. And uh, I think it will be even more the case uh, in Europe. So all in all, I think it's a, it's a great vehicle. Uh, we'll work very hard uh, to make it happen in 2019. It's always, we have always very aggressive timing with Tesla, but I promise we will do our best 
to make that happen by the end of 2019, and uh, shortly after that, uh, in Europe, hopefully. And uh, thank you for your attention, for your support in Netherlands for Tesla, and I look forward to coming back with the truck. Thank you. Do you want to be? You are so enthusiastic. Yeah. Um, do you want? Do you wish you were a truck driver now? That night I'm a truck driver. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, in my previous job, uh, I, I uh, for another OEM, I drove across the country several times uh, with a truck. Yeah, and uh, in the snow and in, uh, in the heat of the summer and. Uh, I love it. I think, uh, as uh, as the minister mentioned, the truck industry is a great industry with a lot of great people, and I'm very lucky to work in it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jérôme Guillard. Thank you. Thank you. And Arthur, you have to here in the room, because we're going to have prizes.